Okay, and welcome back. So this physics problem deals with you on a cliff that overlooks the ocean and you drop a rock from the top and when you hear the water splash, like when the rock hits the water, that's 3.4 seconds later. So that means that once the rock is released from your hand with a stopwatch, 3.4 seconds later, you hear the splash of the water. Okay, so let's start by drawing a picture. So here's the cliff, and here's the water, and here is the rock you drop. So the rock travels down a certain distance, and when it hits the water, it makes a sound. Now as that sound goes up, I'm just gonna draw this like a little, like a little wave sound. So as the sound goes up, the total time it takes from when you drop the rock all the way down and the sound comes back up, that takes a total of 3.4 seconds, okay? So the distance looks like it's the same, right? So we could just say that the distance, D, from the top here is the same for both the sound wave traveling and the rock traveling the distance itself, right? So the sound wave that propagates through the air, the distance it travels is the same as the distance that the rock travels once you release it. So let me just fill this in here. So if we look at the sound wave actually as it travels from your hand, let's just say, for instance, we turn it upside down, the sound wave, right? So it's like a race between the two. If I was to drop the rock, release the rock, and make a sound from that high up, the sound would hit the water first, right? And then the rock after. So that means that there, it takes less time for the sound wave to travel than it does for the rock, right? So if you, if it's a race, 1-1000, 2-1000, 3-1000, um, the rock would take longer to hit the ground or hit the water than the sound wave would. So we're going to let this time be time 1, and we're going to let this time be time 2. So that means the rock has its own respective time, and so does the sound wave. So I guess I should call this sound. And the distances are the same, so that means they both have the same distance. So we'll just say that D is the same for both. So now we know what we're dealing with here. We're dealing with distance and time, but we have a couple things in the word problem that will help us solve this problem. So let's see what we're given. Well, we know that the time it takes for the sound to hit your ear once you release the rock would be essentially the sum of the two times. So that would be time one plus time two. And that's a total of 3.4 seconds. And the other given thing is the speed of the sound. So that's going to be velocity of sound and that's going to be equal to 340 meters per second. Now what else can we derive from this? I guess here I could just put what we know. I guess that's kind of like what you can derive. So since this is a kinematics problem, we're going to allow the initial point of reference to be your hand where the rock is released from, and so we'll just let down be positive. So the distance the rock travels, so we could just say that the distance the rock travels is the same as the distance the sound wave travels, so we'll just call it D, plain and simple, just D. And that's going to be equal to one-half GT squared, right? And you understand how I got that. So G would be the gravitational constant, which we'll fill in later. And the one-half GT squared itself, that's just basically the position of something as it moves with the acceleration being the gravitational constant. And since the initial point of reference is your hand, there's no initial height. And since you're not throwing the rock down at the ground, then there's no initial velocity. So velocity initial for the rock would be zero. In this case, we're not even gonna write it in. Okay, and let's see. We have distance, we've got velocity, we have times here. Now here's the thing. This time for the distance that the rock travels actually is T1, right? 
So we have distance for that, but let's look at the distance for the sound wave. Well, that has a distance too, and that distance is actually equal to, well, we've got a velocity, and we don't know what the time is, but we got a time too, so that would be 340 T sub 2. And that makes sense, right? So now we've got these two equations, D is equal to 1 half G T sub 1 squared, and D is equal to 340 T sub 2. Well, since the Ds are equal to each other, since they're the same, we could just set the right side of the equal sign equal to each other. So that would give us 1 half G T sub 1 quantity squared. That's equal to 340 T sub 2, right? And if you wonder, well, how come the velocity is just going to be positive as well if it's traveling upward? Well, let's put it this way. It doesn't matter which way it's going to be, since this is just a speed, we're not really concerned about the direction in which it's going. We're not trying to locate where the, where the sound is going to be. We're just interested in the distance between your hand, where the rock is released from, and when it strikes the ground. Like, we just need to know how tall the cliff is. That's basically it. Okay, now the next thing to notice is that we have an equation involving t sub 1 and t sub 2. So we have two unknowns. And here's another equation. We have t sub 1 and t sub 2. That has two unknowns. So we now have this equation, number 1, and this equation, number 2. Well, it's just like solving system of linear equations, except this one's not linear. But we can solve these kind of equations the same way, just by using maybe a substitution. So you're familiar with x's and y's. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to rewrite these two equations using x's and y's. And I'm going to change the g, I'm going to substitute the g with the 9.8. And again, since down is positive, it's just going to be a positive amount. So we're going to get for equation number one, I guess I should write this over here. We're going to let x be t sub 1 and let y be t sub 2. Okay, now let's go ahead and make the substitutions. So for equation number one, we're just going to write that as x plus y is equal to 3.4. And for equation two, that's going to be, well, let's see, 1 half times g, g is 9.8. So that's going to be 4.9. And that's going to be t1, so that's going to be x squared. And that's going to be minus, we're just going to move the 340 to the other side, right? So that'll be minus 340, and t sub 2 is actually just y. And that'll be equal to 0. Okay, and this is equation 2. So to solve this, is real simple. All you're going to do is just make a substitution. We're going to let y equal 3.4 minus x. And we'll just use this as our substitution equation, which we'll put into this y over here. So that'll be 4.9 x squared minus 340 times the quantity 3.4 minus x. And this is equal to 0. And if we distribute the negative 340 into this binomial, we'll get 4.9 x squared. Now I'll just multiply negative 340 times the negative x just to put this in standard form. So this will be positive 340x, and then minus 1156, and that's all equal to 0. All right, so now you could just solve this quadratically. Let's just uh, go ahead and put that in a calculator. I think most of you guys have calculators that can just solve the quadratic equation. We're not interested in doing that here. So let's just see. You're going to get two answers. Uh, x is going to end up being about 3.248. And since we're dealing with time, this is going to be in seconds. And your other x is going to be a negative number, so we're going to exclude that one. And so this is the one we're going to be interested in, okay? So now we're going to get the y. And so we just substitute the x of 3.248 into the substitution equation, which is this equation here. And we're going to get... 3.4 minus 3.248, and this is 0 0.152.
seconds. Okay, so now we've got our two different times, right? So we have our time one, which is 3.248, and we have our time two as 0 0.152. And this is in seconds, this is in seconds. Okay, so now to get the distance, the easiest equation to use would be the one involving velocity since there's no squaring involved. And so that would just be 340t, right? Or t sub 2. So that would be this equation right here. So we'll just use that one. So that's going to be d is equal to 340 times 0 0.152. And we get about 51.68. Okay, and for completeness, we may as well plug in t sub 1, which is 3.248, into the distance equation for this one over here, right? We'll make 1 half g, what we found over here, to be 4.9, so it'll just be d is equal to 4.9 t, t sub 1 squared. So d is equal to 4.9 times 3.248 quantity squared, and that's going to give us about 51.69 and this is in meters and this is meters and so this essentially you could just say is about 52 meters and there you go so the tricky part of this problem would be knowing that the two times are different but uh, you know if you just kind of think about it you'll notice that yeah the sound is gonna travel faster so it does the same distance in less time and that's pretty much it other than that, everything is pretty straightforward. All right. Well, as always, good luck with your homework and tests in the future, and thank you for watching.